Hi there, so today I wanted to show you how I took this little pair of booty shorts, made a pattern using them, and imported that pattern into Illustrator, and then added the seam allowances and the elastic waistband allowance within Illustrator. Now I will say I decided to forgo this little aspect at the side here because, well, um, I wanted to show you a very basic, you know, pattern and adding seam allowance to a very basic pattern without design complications, I guess you would say. And furthermore, I needed a pattern for a very tiny pair of booty shorts. Um, I have a customer who wants me to um, make these like little tiny booty shorts like this size. And they're, they're meant for like, I guess, 10 year old or something like that. She said they're for kids, so yeah. Now, I do want to make me uh, mention of measurements. I forgot to mention them when I was filming in the other room there. But um, what you basically want to do is when you have your pants folded over and you've laid them out properly, obviously you're not going to measure them like this, but you're going to measure from the top to the hem, and then you're going to measure across the hem. So just across going like that. Also you, and you want to take note of those measurements obviously, you also you want to measure your pants when they're like this from one end to the next, just relaxed, and then you want to open them up so they're lining up with the side and measure it when they're opened up. And I actually did film that part, but yeah, you want to take note of those two measurements. Okay, so now what you're seeing me do here is uh, measure the elastic and how wide it stretches out and how it sits naturally. Um, I also measured the, uh, you know, the garment itself and I took note of that, but I didn't really um, show that here. So now you're seeing me just go over the front pattern piece with the serrated tracing wheel. Um, after I traced it out, I also did the back and I uh, penciled over my tracing with a ruler, of course, and a French curve. Also, you generally want to um, pin your piece down if you're copying something, uh, just so that, you know, it's not moving around while you're doing this. Okay, so the next thing I do is I take a, p a picture of each pattern piece with my DSLR. Now, you don't need a, one like mine. Um, I have a 16 to 35 lens on there, and uh, it's an L series lens, but I, I use that for nightclub photography, so that's why I have it. But any kit lens will do. The part where we take the pictures that we just took and make them into a digital pattern in Illustrator. All right, so the first thing I want to mention is um, if your picture is slightly off, like if you're off by like maybe a half inch in some spots, it's, you know, fixable. Um, just as long as you you uh, you drew on your pattern, the two by two inch square, you should be fine. And um, as long as you also took the measurements of your piece and noted those down, then yeah, you should be okay. All right, so um, the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to go to view. And by the way, I've already done the back piece here. So as you can see, it's, you know, we've got the seam allowance in and we've got the, um, the allowance for the elastic. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to show grid, view, show grid. So now we got our grids up. And then I'm going to go head over to the layers panel. And I've already titled this layer. Uh, the layer that I have the pictures on, pictures. So as you can see, there's the picture there for the back piece. And now I'm going to turn that off. So we just see that. And the next thing I'm going to do is go to File, Place, and I'm going to select this piece here, which is going to be the front piece. And I'm just going to click and make it so the picture is like that. And then we're going to go bring the opacity down to say around 50 to 60%, just so you could see that two by two inch square. Obviously, it's not measuring two by two inches now, but we're going to make it so that it does. All right. So, as you can see, I'm slightly uneven with how I took the photo and how I actually placed. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to the corner here and just kind of make sure everything balances out. 
so that we have our bottom line matching up with this grid line here. So let's see. Du, 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 du. We just want it to kind of be even with one of the grid lines. All right, I think I am pretty. Uh, I'm just going to move that down just a little bit. I think I'm as even as I'm going to get right now. Um, the next thing we want to focus on is that two by two inch square. We want to make it two by two inches. So we grab this, we hold down shift because we want this to remain proportional. And I'm almost up there. Let me just take my measuring tool. I'm going to go over here where the eyedropper tool is and then measure tool and see if this measures two by two. Oh, not quite yet. Let's see, is the measure two? Sort of got my file placed appropriately and its size. I'm gonna show you with the measuring tool um, that it measures two by two like it should. So from there to there, two inches high, as you could see up here in the corner. And then from here, to here should be about two inches wide. So two inches wide, and the other direction was two inches high. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is head over to the layers panel, and I'm gonna click new layer, and we're just gonna move that up to the top here. We're gonna title that layer front piece. Okay, and uh, now we're going to start tracing around it using the pen tool. So just press P for the pen tool. And again, I'm slightly off here, but I know my measurements for uh, my piece, and I know it should be six across and then six down and then nine from here to roughly about here. So I'm just going to start tracing around it. Already he made here uh, the outline. And everything um, I've measured it and it measures up properly now like I said my picture was very bad so I just kind of did this roughly keeping the measurements in mind anyhow um, so I'm gonna go over to layers panel select the path and then I'm going to go over to here and make sure the anchor point tool is selected oops I move that Ooh, sorry undo undo and let's go back and turn that back on so we can see it. Okay, so we got, let's select this anchor point here and we're just gonna bring it in so it's curved. And I'm not sure if I really like that, so I can go back up a little bit. Undo, undo. You can zoom in and do this, but I'm just going to do it like this. Don't like that at all. Um, okay, let's see. You know what? I'm just going to take this and move this point up a little. There. Uh, yeah, still don't like that anchor point tool. There. I like that a lot better. So I'm going to turn this off now, and you can see we've got our pattern traced out. Now, the next step we want to do is add seam allowance. I've already made a brush for this, but I'm just going to show you the general concept. We're going to make the seam allowance. What we're going to do is going to go to the line segment tool, and we're going to draw a line. It doesn't really matter how long it is, but uh, there's fine. And then we're going to go back up here, select it, so yeah, select it and then go enter 
and we're going to copy it. So essentially we're going to go up vertically by 0.5 inches and a 90 degree angle thereabouts. And we're not going to move it anything horizontally, so it's going to be zero. No, 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 no. Point 0.5, point 0.5, there. All right, so copy. Um, then we're going to say make it orange. There, that should be okay. And then we're going to go back here. Select that line again, that center line that we just drew, and then go enter. Um, make it a 90 degree angle, 90. And vertical would be 0.5, negative 0.5 this time. Copy, and there we are. Let's actually make that orange too as well. We could actually just use the eyedropper tool, but anyways, we're just going to use this one. Just make it orange. There. Now, we have, we're going to have like an inside and an outside, but we're actually just going to delete the inside one uh, afterwards, mainly because um, sometimes this could get a little bit sticky and, and you need that inside one, but anyhow, um, you, you might encounter another example when you see this. So you're going to select it. And we're going to go over to our brushes palette here. And we're going to just drop it in there. And we're going to make it an art brush. And click, click OK. And then all this stuff will come up here. You just want to make sure your arrow is pointing in the correct direction. And not say like going up or whatever. Like not say like that. You don't want that. You want this. OK. What I'm going to do is go ahead and add seam allowance. So I'm just going to select this here and I'm going to click on my brush that I just created and there's your seam allowance. Now you're going to realize that you know your lines are kind of wonky and everything so um, and you want to get rid of this inside line so what you're going to do is you're going to select it again and you're going to go to object and expand appearances so now you can edit your lines you could just click on actually yeah you can just click on them now and go actually to this here and then delete delete and now you're going to realize okay you're you've got a bit of a gap here so you can now go to this tool which is the join tool and you can just kind of run your brush over like that and there, you've got your line connected. Now, you want to add the allowance for the elastic band, which is an extra half an inch. So what you're going to do is select, or this is how I do it. There's probably a better way. But you're going to just select this top part here, and then click Enter, move up about... Um, Let's see what this does here. Okay, yeah, that brings it up about half an inch there. So now you have your allowance for your elastic and you've got your seam allowance built in. So now we're going to just title this and all that. So now I'm gonna go say, oh, this is called the front piece, front, and then cut two, and then maybe up here I'm going to put, uh, no, 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 up here. Uh, let's see, up here I'm going to put elastic, one inch elastic, elastic. I'm going to go here and make it center. Uh, it's not doing it right. Make it move it over here like this. Okay, so now we've got our seam allowance and the allowance for the elastic band, and everything's looking all good. 
So now I might just select it all and go Command-G to group them. And that is it. Your two pattern pieces are done. Now you're all ready for printing. I do have a tutorial on my channel on how to print these patterns on 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper. So you could go ahead and check that out. If you found this video useful, um, or if you have any suggestions or something you would do differently, then please leave it in the comments section below. And uh, thank you for watching.